G'day and welcome, or should I say, I'm back. It's been a while since I've done the last video and I promise I won't be a stranger. The following letter, which I'll be reading out, was sent to media outlets by mail, online and by fax, including The Guardian Australia, The Conversation, The Saturday Paper and Fairfax Media. It was picked up by Fairfax, New Matilda and The Guardian Australia. I will read it in full here. It was sent on Wednesday the 9th of July 2014 and it was called A Change in Perspective. I typed this letter not just as an Australian born man but also as a citizen of this beautiful blue green globe we call earth and I fear for all our futures I fear for the next generation after my own and I fear for the next generation afterwards that and so on and so on I fear for the soul and the integrity of this island nation we call Australia this fear I speak of is caused by the polarization caused by elements of our society that has flourished and like a disease has spread into the different strands of our civilization I love my city of Sydney, but I cringe at how uncaring we have become to the plot of our own homeless when you read some of the cruelest comments in media, social media, air comment areas after an article. We have stopped to listen to each other. We have stopped to simply do this, care. The growing apathy I see on public transport when almost everyone is lost in their own worlds in texts on their phones. People it seems for the most part want to recoil from talking to one another and would rather lose themselves in social media. Our current political system is shambolic. The two party system has run its course in my opinion. Our politicians rather than energize and uplift the Australian people with compassionate policy and have pandered to the bigoted to the extremists, to the downright racists. Both parties state that they care about our nation, and yet if they cared for our nation and the people within it, and the environment, and so on, they would not commit policies of class warfare, of using emotive speech and terminology such as welfare leaners, and would not use the plight of asylum seekers in such demeaning way, terms and ways. The Australian people have either forgotten that the government works in their interest or the majority of people simply do not care until their hip pocket is affected. The current coalition government states that they were elected with a mandate and yet we the Australian people did not elect them to keep secrets from us. Operation Sovereign Borders is simply a calculated piece of policy tainted in bigotry and smacks of touches of the white Australia policy of old. The voters role does not begin and end at a federal or state election. It does not begin and end on election day. There has been enough silence as this current government has sought to divide and use sloganism and being protected by the likes of Rupert Murdoch media's empire. It ha has had a voice piece on commercial TV shock jock right-wing radio and tabloids such as the telegraph or as I like to term it the telegraph I watched I have watched enough of Parliament's question time to see that the majority of politicians have lost touch and those few who have not and do try to help people are often drowned out by party politics or quietened down or have to give up I was a former ARP voter and a member of the party but I am now forever separated from politics and there is no single party who I can vote for at this present time. The coalition is as bad as the American Tea Party and the ARP, ARP have lost their way on many social issues. Furthermore, I believe capitalism is a failed system. As I have become more and more observant of our society, I can hear the vast and often cruel cries of a vastly unhappy society 
pressurized and polarized. Both politics and religion have been used as instruments of pain, manipulation, and above all, has made people divisive. We decry the violence in our society and yet have fundamentally chosen to be blind to the ideologies that dull the senses and create problems rather than helps to elevate and propel humanity forward. Capitalism is simply a monopoly where the haves increase their share at the offset of the have-nots. Now, if a highly advanced space-faring species visited us tomorrow, imagine in tomorrow and observed us and studied our history of our species, the human race, it would not be a good read or a good result. If they were to pass judgment on us, it would be severe and cold and callous, as we have done to others. Because our history is stained in blood, each page of our past has been about one ideological, uh, sorry, one ideology, ideology trumping over another, about a belief that one race is better than another and so on. We say collectively that we have learned from the war, World Wars of two, 1914 and 1939 that never again would we spill the blood of so many people and allow hatreds and ideology to drag us into conflict. And yet we must admit to, to something that ultimately vilifies us as a species, that our race is aggressive and violent, that we have purged our planet of resources, killed ecosystems and slaughtered animals sometimes just for fun or to put them up on some mantelpiece. This is a gloomy picture, is it not? Am I painting something very forlorn? Is there hope? Have I given up hope? Would you not be... You would not be surprised if I said I had, but alas, no. I have not given up on humanity, and this is why I have not given up on hope itself. There is something truly deep inside us that is inherently good and that is our temerity to learn. Now, to fully embrace this, we must uh, view violence in a different light. We must come to terms with our own dark uh, side and choose to change as a collective. And this is how I believe it can be done. It starts from you and me. We can't look at our politicians. We can't look at the religious leaders. We can't look at other people. It starts from you and me. It starts with a smile. It starts with realizing that each of us are interconnected with the other. We cannot view ourselves as lone islands. We must come to see our love of violence in movies, in media, in militarism, and in regalia of the past. We must see that all wars kill people. That there is no right or wrong side. Not just not just does it kill our own numbers, but it taints our planet. Take, for example, the senseless story recently of a father who stabbed to death his three-year-old son. I cannot and would rather not understand this man's mind, for it had to be rooted in some sort of violence from, its, from his past. To start to change uh, society, mo monumental steps must be taken now. First and foremost, humankind must see politics and religion as archetypes of violence. The violence of the past and the present can be brought down to a singular form rooted in either manipulative concept. You have the Middle East that has forms of ideology that countless generations believe in and would die for. And if they fought rationally, people would ask themselves, why do we kill each other and hurt each other for such unseen beings? And if these gods did exist, and if they were omnipotent and all-powerful and caring of humanity, why would they allow all this senseless and cruel pain and violence to continue? And furthermore, the same sh should be said of politics, where people support a party, sometimes so blindly to believe in some very vile and hum inhumane policies, policies that are su sugar-coated in nationalism and jingoism. I call on a old wisdom, pacifism, and for this to work, 
the old order must fall and this can only fall if humanity or enough people wake up to the fallacies of violence to our own historical violence you are not a lesser person if you show a softer side you are not weak if you don't anger or show uh, kindness turn off the violence see the beauty of our fellow human by appreciating each other and each moment for the end of senseless and cruel violence only begins when each of us takes the first steps and the first realization that this species to survive each one of us needs a change in perspective the grand principles of the heavens braces on the razor's edge of truth from this moment onwards I simply do not call myself an Australian I call myself a citizen of this earth a planet we must preserve and live in harmony with this is our moment we deserve better